to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Any other roll call, Mr. Geeson? Yes, good evening, everyone. Dr. Cross. Here. Mr. Stubbs. Here. Mr. Potter. Here. All are present. Great. Uh, can we have visitor comments? I'll state your name and address, Mark. Mark Keener, 7865 Jamaica Road. Proud to be the official German Township uh, representative to the Valley View Jed Board. So, uh, fun update. I actually talked to one of you at least. Uh, we were tentatively scheduled to have a meeting last Thursday. Uh, however, it was tentative until the city decided to send out a notice saying we were having a meeting. And so the first I heard we were going to actually officially have a meeting was when Mr. Stubbs forwarded me an email that he had received from Mr. Heaston with the meeting announcement. So, uh, unfortunately, not everybody on because the, nobody on the jet board actually sent the meeting announcement out. So, I forwarded it to uh, uh, two people from the school board, Mr. Schaller and Mrs. Schmidt, neither one of whom had any idea there was going to be a meeting that night, neither one of whom could make it. And so, we decided to call the meeting off. I called the attorney right as she was walking out the door from her office in Cincinnati, um, and she does not carry a cell phone. So, I managed to get her before she headed out. And uh, in our discussion, uh, we determined, well, we couldn't really have a meeting anyway, since we don't have regularly scheduled meetings at this point. They are all special meetings, and special meetings, of course, require a meeting notice that says special meeting, and we can also only discuss the items that are on the agenda. And since our primary purpose of meeting was to approve opening bank accounts, which the city didn't bother to put on the agenda, we couldn't have done our purpose anyway. So I spent two hours. Um, making phone calls, coming up here, posting notice on the door that the meeting was canceled and waiting around till about 10 after 7, just in case somebody actually showed up to let them know. So that was quite fun. So today I gave everybody an email. Um, I sent this out shortly after lunch today to everybody that's on the JED board and um, just saying our, our need to schedule a meeting. I had called the uh, chief and he gave me the available dates on the calendar for the next two and a half weeks. So I ask everybody to reply back on what days would work for them. And then also uh, topics to be discussed so that we could actually put that on the next agenda. And um, so far I've heard from two of the I think six or seven people that I've sent the email today. Um, in spite of saying it would be great if we could determine a meeting date before the end of the day today. So anyway. Hopefully, here in the next two weeks, we can actually have a meeting that everybody will attend and we can get our bank account open because we now have two checks sitting in Farmer's Bill waiting to be deposited. Any questions from those that have sent me to this phone? <laughs> Who, who's going to be Farmer's Bill representative? Uh, Cunningham. Uh, I don't know. Him, so. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. We sent, we sent the right man. I know. Yeah, that. right. <laughs> Okie dokie. Any other visitor comments? Anybody online? Okay, let's go with the fiscal officer's report, Mark. All right. Good evening again, everyone. All right. I have given you two sets of minutes. I am caught up. I, you know, the minutes of the December 30 special meeting and also the January 2nd organizational meeting. Are there any corrections? I didn't find anything. Can I get a motion to approve? I'd like to make a motion to approve the 12 30 22 special meeting minutes and the 1 2 23 organizational meeting minutes. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. I have also given you what I'm now calling the final December financial reports. They are essentially the same reports that you reviewed on December 30 with just a few additions. There were some minor transactions that I found as I was doing my bank rec, some things that I was not aware had hit our bank account. And then also the reports now include the December interest from First National Bank, which was $4.71. 
and from Star Ohio, which was $5,940.12. Um, but uh, what I, unless you have any questions about anything, I would just like to have a motion to uh, approve the um, final financial statements. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the final December financial reports and reauthorize the payment of December bills, warrants 50622 through 50628 and vouchers 986 through 1070 for payroll direct deposit, tax withholdings, and other electronic payments. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Very good. Thank you very much. All right. After our December 12th meeting, yeah. I forwarded your resolutions that requested the county auditor to certify the funds that would be received by a half mill five year renewal or replacement of the pool levy. And we've received the auditor certifications, which I sent to you. Uh, the renewal levy would actually generate more than what the city of Germantown estimated at their last uh, council meeting that you reported last month, Dr. Cross. It would generate $96,292 per year, and that's actually at 95%. Replacement levy would generate $111,690, again at 95%. So the next step is for you to pass a resolution to place either the renewal or the replacement on the May 2nd ballot for the entire township, both incorporated and unincorporated. I've given you that resolution and I suggest that you read it in its entirety. And we'll make that resolution Number nine, you do not have the resolution. I didn't copy it off in front of me. That's fine. 2023 09. Okay. Yeah, but. And I can copy one for you after the meeting if you need it, Dr. Cross. So we had decided on a renewal versus a replacement. Correct. So the, the only question I have, uh, what's. At the, I, I wasn't able to attend the Germantown Council meeting, but I watched it online. And Mr. Reed said, stated that if the pool levy will cost $4,500, the city would not run the levy in May. You remember him saying that? Uh, he did say that. He did. Um, but he, was he not informed that the plan was to run it? it we're going to run, we're running the pool levy. So. I'm not sure I understand because the city doesn't run the levy. Yeah, they they don't. He just he just brought up his I guess his when he was at the pool board they were discussing that. So the if it costs too much, he found out 72 days before the election you can pull it off. But I, that is not going to happen. We're going to run it as a renewal. So so what number is it, Mark? 20, number nine, 2023-09. Okay, I'd like to introduce resolution 2023-09, a resolution determining to proceed to levy a tax in excess of the 10 mil limitation. Board of Trustees, German Township, Montgomery County, Ohio, met in regular session, open to the public on January 9th, 2023 at the German Township Hall, located at 12102 State Route 725 West, Germantown, Ohio, and would also online use WebEx. WebEx. The following members were present. Dr. Mark Cross, Dr. Jacob, Mr. Jacob Stubbs, Mr. Lewis Potter. So Dr. Cross moved to the adoption of the following resolution. Whereas the Board of Trustees of German Township, Montgomery County have determined that it is necessary to levy a tax outside the 10 mil limitation for German Township. And whereas the Board of Trustees of German Township, Montgomery County proposes that said tax will be a renewal for parks and recreational purposes, swimming pool, as specified in section 5705.19H of the Ohio Revised Code. And whereas the levy shall be at the rate of one half point or 0 0.5 mil for each $1 valuation, which amounts to five cents for each $100 evaluation for a period of five years commencing in 2023, first due in calendar year 2024. And whereas the county auditor has certified the total current valuation of the unincorporated and incorporated area of German Township and the dollar amount of revenue that would be generated by the proposed levy annually, be it resolved by the Board of Trustees of German Township, Montgomery County, two thirds of all members elected or appointed there to concurring section one that the Board of Trustees of German Township, Montgomery County hereby determined to proceed with a renewal levy 
and the question of said tax levy shall be permitted to the submitted to the electors of the unincorporated and incorporated portions of German Township at the primary election to be held on May 2nd, 2023. If said tax is approved by a majority of said electors, such tax levy shall be placed upon the 2023 tax list and duplicate first collection in calendar year 2024. Section two, that the fiscal officer of the Board of Trustees of German Township, Montgomery County, Ohio, be and is hereby, hereby directed to certify a copy of this resolution to the Board of Elections in Montgomery County, Ohio, not less than 90 days before the date of said election upon which it will be voted and to notify the Board of Elections to cause the notice of election on the question of levying the said tax to be given as required by law. Could I have a second? A second. Can I have a roll call, Mr. Easton? Any discussion of the resolution? If not, I will call the roll. Dr. Cross? Yes. Mr. Stubbs? Yes. And Mr. Potter? Yes. Resolution 2023-09 is adopted. All right. Um, at the organizational meeting, you approved a $4,000 appropriation from the general fund to the road and bridge fund number 2031. That's an approximate payment for the mowing and trimming of the rural cemeteries in 2023 by the road department. And before I can make that transfer, I would need a resolution approving that. I've given you the language, and if you're inclined to do that tonight, we'll make that number 10, 2023-10. Resolution approving the transfer of $4,000 from fund number 1,000 general to the fund one number 2031 dash road and bridge has a approximate pro 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 payment for the 2023 maintenance of the township cemeteries by the road department. So a second to resolution 2023-10. Okay, thank you. Any discussion? Dr. Cross? Yes. Mr. Stubbs? Yes. Mr. Potter? Yes. Resolution 2023-10 is adopted. Also that same night, um, you approved $34,900 appropriation from the general fund to other funds as follows, $15,500 to the police district fund, $14,900 to the gasoline tax fund, and $4,500 to the trash fund. And I can also make those transfers if you de decide tonight to pass a resolution, and we'll make that number 11. I'd like to go introduce uh, resolution 2023-11, resolution approving the transfer of $34,900 from the fund 1000 general to the other funds as follows, 15,500 to fund 2081 police district, 14,900 to fund 2021 gasoline tax, 4,500 to fund 20, 71 garbage and waste disposal. The purpose of the transfers is to strengthen the fund balances of the recipient funds. Is there a second to resolution? Right. Thank you. Any discussion? None. I'll call the roll. Dr. Cross? Yes. Mr. Stubbs? Yes. Mr. Potter? Yes. Resolution 2023 11 is adopted. Thank you. Uh, CINTAS has asked us to um, approve a five-year contract for mats and towels. I would assume that you've done that in the past, but I went back and looked at seven, 2017 and 2018, which would have been about five years ago, and I do not see any that, that actually the trustees approved of. But given that it's a five-year contract, I think it would be appropriate for you to approve the <laughs> resolution. We'll make that number. On, uh, number 12. I'd like to res uh, introduce resolution 2023-12, resolution approving a 60-month contract with the Sentence Corporation. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? John, I'll call the roll. Dr. Cross? Yes. Mr. Stubbs? Yes. Mr. Potter? Yes. Thank you. Resolution 2023-12 is adopted. Last month's meeting at the special meeting, 
there was a question that was raised about how much of the FALTS trust fund can be distributed. And as you recall, the original principal cannot be spent. In addition to that, only 75% of the increase above the original principal may be spent. So I went back and reviewed the work papers that Dr. Cross prepared back in 2019 uh, when he did all the research on the FALTS trust fund. And I prepared the analysis that I sent to you. And I believe that as of the end of 2022, uh, you can um, 15,328 dollars and 38 cents of the 32,641 dollars and 86 cents is available to be spent. And just as a reminder, you did appropriate 4,000 on uh, for 2023. But whenever you're ready to make any donations, we'll do that at whatever amount you want. Um, it's unfortunate, actually, that Mr. Fouts said we could only spend 75% of the increase because that number just keeps growing over the years. And I don't know what we do with it other than get more interest. So are there any questions of that? All right. Thanks for doing that research on that and going back. I appreciate it. Yep. Sorry. I think, you know, we don't want to disperse it too quickly. We want to make it last at least as long as we can. So. We've got time to decide. Oh, yes. <laughs> Plenty of time. Thanks again, Mark. You're welcome. Um, at the, <clears throat> a year ago, when we sat here on January 10th, Mr. Stubbs listed his goals for 2022, and one of which was paying off in advance the remaining debt at First National Bank for the Valley View Water and Sewer District. Uh, however, we simply made our regular loan payments last year in June and December. The principal we now owe is $59,735 and change. Semi-annual payments are due through December of 2025, each payment of $10,307. Now, the interest rate is only 1%. So I don't know if that's something you want to consider for 2023. I'm not sure I would recommend that you do that because we're getting 4% on our Investment at Star Ohio. No, I, I I like the idea of getting it off the books early, but because we're making so much on interest, it doesn't make sense to make that payment at this time. So uh, while I would like to get it off, I think the smart financial move would be to keep paying the one percent interest and um, switch it out. Yeah, Agreed. yeah. Very good. I just thought I would bring it to your attention, and at the same time, at that same meeting. Uh, Mr. Stubbs, you also said that one of your goals for 2022 was to change how the, how the cell tower rent is posted. Currently, we um, put that rent into the general fund. I know many years ago, I believe it was in the police fund, and you had said that you'd like to go back to that in 2022. We did not make a change last year. I don't know if that's something you want to consider for this year. And if so, we can. I'll prepare some language on a resolution for another meeting. So if if I'm thinking right, it's somewhere in the eighteen thousand dollar range. It is eighteen thousand. I didn't mention that, but I should have. Okay. Um, you know the 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 money used from it, I think originally went to um, dispatch, and then dispatch fee has increased over the years. Is that something the board would like to consider? Um, as switching that money from the general fund to the Police fund to help offset the cost of um, dispatch, or uh, how much has the dispatch increased? I would oh, I'd say <clears throat> we pay about thirty six thousand a year. Um, initially, well, so go back a couple of years. Originally, what? the the agreement with the tower was when when they put the tower here, the, placing the tower on our property, offset one hundred percent offset our costs of dispatch. Well, then the state took is it the state took over um, the contract on the tower, and then they gave us eighteen thousand dollars instead of covering, like the original agreement had said. But okay, so they they got us on that one. They, well, so it's there's nothing we can do about it now. At the time, we could have went after the county because the contract was with the county, not with the state. Right, the state gave the tower to. I'm sorry, the county gave this tower to the state. That doesn't 
nullify our contract with the county. But the county thought that it did. That's water under the bridge at this point because there's nothing we can do. So, what so we at, at the time, the trustees said, we will give you what we're getting from the state, which at the time was 18,000. That's when the police department started paying for the dispatching. And our the initial was about 32 or 34,000 a year. And then that offset money that we were now paying the 18 was. And I don't recall why we changed it over. I think we were just, our general fund was just always on funds. That's when we so, took the pay cuts. And it's kind of strengthen the general fund. Yeah. Strengthened. It's, I think it's very strengthened. Yeah. So what, in your opinion, Mark, what do you think? That I have no problem with you um, making that switch back to them. And if so, I'll prepare some language that we can introduce next meeting. If that's something you'd like to do. Well, let's, I'm agree. I, I think that's fair. I think it's fair and I, let's do it on a year to year. Yes. Is that fair? I think in case something happens, but let's do it on a year to year. So every we can set this up at our organizational meeting, maybe that we can talk about this, but um, or our budget meeting, I guess, but have it set. So if the general fund is in the in good enough shape to, to be able to take that eighteen thousand um, dollar hit, we'll reimburse the police department for the for the uh, dispatch fee. One of the things I do before every meeting is I read the minutes from a year ago. Okay. So if I would have read those minutes yeah. before the organizational meeting, yeah. we could have, or even before the budget meeting, yeah. we could have done it then. But, okay. So yeah, I, I'm in favor of You're switching that back to the. <laughs> yeah. Police I department. yeah. Okay. I will prepare that for next month. That's the person that does the police department's budget. I appreciate it. <laughs> and with that, I am done. Thank you, Mark. Did we have the police department report? Yes, first of all, happy National Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. I don't have anything law enforcement related. However, I do have something to discuss about the germantownship.org email. In order to maintain records for emails of past elected officials and employees, I believe I have successfully transferred all the emails from Opera Reed at germantownship.org, zoning temp at germantownship.org, and Haley Sewell at germantownship.org to a email account called email history at germantownship.org. Folders were created <clears throat> on the email histories accounts Google Drive or Opera Reads inbox and sent emails. Haley Sewell's inbox sent emails and all labeled emails as well as the inbox and sent emails for zoning temp. Uh, all those were sent to the email history and then I put them on the Google Drive. Uh, the emails in the email history at germantownship.org are believed to have been from former trustee Tyler Rimmert's emails. And both, uh, both, his in, both the inbox and sent emails were then transferred to the Google Drive appropriately titled for Mr. Rimmert's emails. What I would like to know is what emails you discussed earlier or a previous meeting at or creating. I don't recall if it was Zoning Commission, EZA, um, but in that, while you think about those, I would also suggest that you eliminate the emails for Auburn Reed, Haley Sewell, Zoning Temp, Jeremy Holbrook, as these emails are not used and only costing the township money. I would keep Joseph Anzik's email as it currently is the admin for the email system. Uh, and that's how I manage the emails and will be able to create any emails going forward or delete them and manage it. So. So, if all the emails have been transferred from the former trustees account to it's to be saved somehow, that there's no issue deleting those. I don't believe as long as we have right. But I don't want to just go deleting things without. The no, process. right, right. But uh, I, I'm asking more than right. yeah. So, 
I don't think there's anything. I don't think there's a reason to have keep, those keep them right. there. Right. But I just didn't so, want so to. So they're not linked to each other after you save them when you delete it? No, they, not, they will just be non existent. They'll just be non existent. But so how do you? Other than, than on your history. Oh, okay. So you want uh, someone makes a records request for an email that say uh, the zoning temp uh, sent or received. I would then go to the Google Drive uh, where I save the zoning temps sent or uh, incoming emails and search through for that particular email. Okay, so it's 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 separated right yes. now. So the emails are separate from the history. So you can delete the e emails. It doesn't yeah, bother yeah. the history. Yeah, they're they're you saved. The account. Yeah, I could delete the account because they're now saved under the email history account. As long as we're sure they're saved, I yeah, that's I don't have just... an issue because I think it's two years after. Right. That they need. That was the other thing that we hadn't got to. There is a time frame, and I think as far as Hopper reads, two years has passed. No. Only been one year. Well, only been one year. But it would save us a year of, because it's not going to be used it anymore. And actually, I suspended it. You don't want to use it anymore. Right. You don't want somebody writing to any of those right. individuals. I had suspended it. I had to unsuspend it to do what I did, but then I resuspended it. So, so who can access those email histories? Just you? Or? Well, at this moment, just me. But any or anyone I provide the information how to log in under the email history. Probably best to just keep it with you versus trying. Well, I think Mark Heaston should have oh, yeah. some access to it. And Mark and I work pretty well right. back and, and forth. If there's ever a need that I need to get something, I have no concerns at all. I right. Well, yes. This will not be like a previous time when I well, that's what I password. not that I thought <laughs> you weren't would do that, but in the situation has occurred in the past, unfortunately. Yes. Uh, and actually, yeah, some of have it. some of our emails that we've been working on by securing different things, I've had to use Mark because it goes to a uh, roadrunner. Oh, the yeah, you know that was the safety uh, email to send things to. So I mean, I mean we I do touch to, base a lot. I had the global password. Yeah, for the whole system. So the global password. I had to share that with him so that he could get it. <laughs> So the, the one question as far as uh, a, a new email, and that was basically for Kurt. We had discussed that a little bit, whether the zoning commission president wants his own German township .org email. Yeah, with the problems of monitoring it and me going out of the country and stuff, I think it might be better uh, to go through info at... Well, go, go through Haley for everything. I'm Haley, I'm sorry. <laughs> Her, her name came up. <laughs> uh, go through Shauna for everything. That would be, which is what what the plan is. To... <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to take Shauna for that. If you two determine that it's something that we should handle, or at least look at or consult with, we're more happy to do that. I don't think at this time. I think they say let's let's try to keep this pretty simple. Thank you, sir. Because you you don't want to be bothered. Then if you can't answer them, and if you're out of town or out of the country, then it, you know then it makes it difficult. David, can I ask you a question? Yeah, name and address. David Gillard, 14239 Um, In the interest of security, I'd like you to look around the table at each other person and imagine I'm not there tomorrow. Not existing anywhere. Are you okay with all the data you can see? Is the data available? There is a how to get to it. There is a uh, notepad that I write down everything. They all know where that's at. Well, it's sitting right next to my keyboard at this moment. But okay. that's typically it's it's on my desk, my credenza. So it is accessible as long as somebody has a key. All the trustees and the fiscal officer have keys to my office. Donna has keys to my office. Is there a, next question. Is there a system in place to ensure that those conditions are met? That they are in fact available because everybody knows or everybody's been told or some other word you want to use 
that makes that happen. Each system in place. And then the last question, if there's a massive fire and this place turns to ashes tomorrow, are we okay? We're okay because I could literally log in from my phone. I could go to the library. I could log into where? Into the Google. Not which, which is where we go through to get to our emails. In the cloud. And oh, yeah. everybody else is the same way. All of you have that security? That's yeah, we have all our own email addresses and passwords. No, and you access it. You we access it, yes. This place is not here. Yeah, yeah. I can access my emails from home, and I have backups for this that I keep at home, too. So, I think uh, what Mr. Groan's asking is, if I was to take what's on that notepad, Put it in a digital form, send it to the fiscal officer, send it to a, a trustee, whoever else. That way, if tonight the entire building burned down, the notepad that all the passwords are on would also be burned up. And it would actually be my own memory that would have to serve us, or we'd have to recover by going through. Unless you happen to be here when the place went up. <laughs> I have more important things to grab. <laughs> if he was here when it went up, I would question. <laughs> My overall concern is, you know, I came from a world where this had to be, had to be able to prove that it was all available, all recoverable, including the raid on the drives and all that stuff. So that's what that's what brings yeah. it up to me. And um, most often, the users of the data don't really care about that security umbrella. Well, and I I think that we're a step above those type of people because we automatically thought we need to secure those emails, um, even though that's an account that's no longer used. As it would be so easy just to go in and delete them, but then you risk potentially having a records request that you cannot produce. So, thank you. I follow that with a, I guess another question. Uh, we had a situation back last year with a, with a laptop that wasn't being backed up. Has that been addressed? It was a, a zoning. I don't know. I, I can't answer that. We still have the laptop, right? Oh yeah, we yeah, have. But has it been replaced, and is the replacement being backed up? Or I heard that that a laptop was was correct. It was uh, broken beyond usability. You're you're currently using my old one, but you're using iWork, which is a cloud based, right? So everything you need to run your department is available, even if the computer is gone. Not necessarily. I mean, iWork is, but there are documents on here. Oh, that's true. I mean, if I need to start putting everything on a flash drive, I can put it on a flash drive. You used to have an off-site backup, guys. It used to be idea. The cloud. Something you can access from anywhere in the world. It backs up automatically. I mean, would it be beneficial if I start doing all of my documents instead of doing them on Word documents, I could do them on Google Drive? That's how the road department does everything. That way they're all on Google Drive and we're not paying <laughs> technology company like CDO to well, you can a fortune. Also, I think Mr. Hamilton and the road department is quite a bit setting up like a Google Drive automatic mm -hmm. file backup. Yeah. So you can still keep using Word, everything still on your laptop, but it will. Yeah. Well, we can do that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that concludes my report. But you didn't get your oh, answer. Sorry. Go ahead. Yes, my answers. What what, what email? Do, do we want do we want a, a BZA or is any commission uh, uh, email? Not created? at this time. Let's, let's hold on. We don't want a BZA. We this okay. would just be to the zoning commission present. Well, at, at any time if trustees want something created, all they gotta do is tell me and I can create an email and we did recover some of the old minutes, correct? Some of the meeting minutes. Oh, that's a totally different issue. 
Um, in my searches early or late last week, I came across the old tripod uh, website for the township and on it from 2010 to 2000 and I want to say 18 are the minutes. So I began downloading them and uploading them to our current website so people can go back as far as 2010. Where I messed up was the minutes are just loaded in there. So it's just loaded in with a date. So it'll say like uh, 10, meaning the year, Jan, meaning January, and then nine. So that would be um, January 9th of 2010. There was a meeting. I didn't go into the I, I didn't open it to see if it was a special meeting or a regular meeting. So it just has them all in there. My plan is, because I did, I want to say I did through 2013 is what I've uploaded so far. I'm going back through and looking to see which ones are special and which ones are not, or are regular. And then separating them out so that 2010 would have regular meeting minutes and special, uh, 2010 special meeting minutes like we do on everything else. And then... Um, it is created in a section, I believe I called minutes archive or archive or something on the website. So when you go, if you go from a laptop all the way on the side, there's a plus. Uh, if you click on it, you can either go to JED, uh, Joint Economic Development District, or this archive so that you can look in any minutes all the way back to 2010. That's fascinating because when we set up this new website our previous website administrator said to me there's not sufficient availability to put more than just a year or two of minutes on because i was upset because we had lots of history on the old website well here, here's uploaded. what i found okay so when i was doing this i go to 2010 you can upload, if you create a section on that web page that's for 2010 meet, meeting minutes, let's just call it that. When I go to upload, it only allows me to put 15 items in that little area. Well, there's like 20. So what I did was I started splitting it 2010, January through June, July through December was the next block. So there's two for each year, but the reason I did that some of those are special meetings. If we take the special meetings out, we should only have 12 regular meeting minutes and the rest are all special. So that's where if I would have thought about it before I started doing it, I would have separated them to begin with. Now I have to go back and separate them out, figure out which one's which. When you get done with this project, which is fantastic, thank you for doing it. Let's, I'll get the more current years in which I all have all digital okay. minutes. Yeah, we can do that. It'd be simple. Simple. I mean, even going back to all Mr. Keener's minutes. Mm -hmm. Well, and it should under the folders he found on Tripod should have my minutes on there. Those were being uploaded. At least every couple of years. <laughs> they should have been pretty close to me. And it was shortly thereafter that she took over the website and I Heard that whole story about oh there's not enough room and I went I did cipher and posting plans and determined that we had room for the website for about 430 years of EDS. Um, <laughs> however, I, I do want to just make one suggestion though, or, or something to look into. So the, the stuff that was on tripod is all in PDF format, but those are scanned. PDF, so they are really nothing more than so you can't highlight, you can't search that PDF. Um, so they that that means they're also not ADA accessible. So a blind person coming to our website can't open those minutes and read PDF is not ADA accessible. It's nothing more than an image like a picture. There is a way around that. Um, and it it's a little bit of a hassle, maybe, and, and this may be something to ask um, somebody up at the OTA conference on one of the records retention and so on. But if Mr. Houston, when you're saving the minutes instead of going and scanning them and creating that image, which is how I always did it, 
So if you go and print to a PDF printer, and if you can save, I mean, you'll, at some point you'll need to scan like a, a piece of letterhead so that you can print page one on letterhead and then page two and three and so on. And then you'll also need to then embed your signature and whatever trustee signed those minutes for that. So you've got trustee signature. That will create then a PDF that is readable, ADA accessible. So if you print, and well, on, on computer Sean is using, there's a printer driver on there called a Bullseye PDF. On your new one, I think Microsoft now includes a PDF writer to make it a writable, readable. Something. And Chief, thanks so much for going back. That irritated the Jesus out of me that that stuff did not get transferred. So. Well, we have. Well, I've located it. It's still out there. Okay. Right, Bob didn't close its doors. It did not get deleted. It's just a matter of me. I just started with 2010. I think I got through 2013 downloading them one by one and then starting to upload them as well. Because I was going to go back and, and do a public records request for all minutes from 2012 through 2017 mm -hmm. and uh, expect Mr. Eastman to scan them. That will save him that trouble. Well, it makes it much easier for residents that are looking for old minutes because in other, before there wasn't any way to really make it um, yeah, physically. But I appreciate it, Chief. Yeah, I thought about just putting a link to that tripod, but I thought it was better if we downloaded it. <laughs> are we still so, paying the 10 bucks a month? I have no idea. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we are. Okay, that's a good thing because if we stop paying them, it's 990, I believe, to yeah. be precise. Yeah, it's somebody's credit card. So once I get that completed, we may want to see stuff. That'll make a big difference to the general fund. Yeah. Over 10 years. <laughs> there, right. I'll help cover that. That's our Ohio money we're getting. Yes. You're welcome. <laughs> so, you. did you get your answer about deleting the emails? Why don't you just think about it and next meeting I'll bring it back up? Yeah. I have no trouble deleting. You know, Chief, is that it? That is that concludes my report. Road department, Jeremy. Um, just to keep you up to date on the Eckhart Road property sale deed transfer. I did uh, drop the signed documents that the board executed at the last meeting off at the Montgomery County building and dropped it off at deed transfer, and that cost me 50 cents. Um, I did pay for it out of my own pocket. Um, I can remember they are running behind, and I called them this morning because I had not heard from them by phone or email on how that was moving along. And they said they were running behind because of the holidays and some sickness in the office, but uh, they will be sure to let me know. Um, once that's done, um, I will have to go back up to Montgomery County, pick up the documents from deed transfer walk across the hallway and drop them off at the deed recorders. <laughs> so once that's completed, I believe the entire sale complete along with any transfers and fees that go along with it. And at that point, the property should be wide on corporations name. There should be no more work to be done by either Mr. Weidel or the township. So um the only other thing to report is obviously we've been cleaning the trucks up after the big storm. Um, and we spent some time Friday and today replacing a bunch of light bulbs, cleaning some bugs out of some of the lights that were in the trustees room, clerk's office, and me. Other than that, it's been pretty quiet. Our salt supply doing good. Yeah. We didn't really use that much during the last storm because it was so cold. We didn't salt until the temperature got up into like the high teens and 20s and then put it to it. And then, you know, we got that warm streak. So everything melted off as, as, as far as, as a salt, salting occurred, occurrence, it we're still so pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the use of the ARPA funds for the parking lot is still in the plans. Is that? It's up to the board. Yes. But I think that was the plan. We were going to wait till this year, it's probably the spring, and get bids. Revisit that.
Good. Good turn. Thanks again. Good. Uh, zoning. Do you have anything, Sean? Uh, we really don't have much. December was really slow. There was no zoning permits issued in December. Um, and the only thing we have on the books for right now is the EB Road Leach case will commence again tomorrow. Let's add a couple things. There may be a, a, a possible zoning zoning commission and BZA member change. There was a, a Joe Scholler actually uh, reached out as far as a zoning commission member, but I haven't heard back from that person. So we'll kind of see who shows up for the BZA tomorrow and see if we need to make some changes. Um, I put together an essential zoning resolution information document for Sean, and this should help answer some of the frequently asked questions as far as minimum square footage for houses, uh, one principal structure per lot, which is very diff kind of difficult to find in the zoning resolution, uh, minimum frontage in the Ag District. Uh, was That was about it, but yeah, so that will kind of make it a little easier. The BZA and the Zoning Commission held their organizational meetings on 1-3-23. The leadership remained the same on both boards. I'll go ahead. Uh, Mrs. Close is going to be attending the OTA this year. So I, I will go ahead and look at some of the uh, some of the courses. And there's... Okay, okay, so good. Um, that's it. So, um, Mr. Potter? Uh, pretty quiet. Everybody's planning to shut down. I don't have much to say. <laughs> Mr. Stubbs. I just have a few things. Um, we took care of the pool levy renewal. Um, uh, as of our organizational meeting, I'm no longer on the pool oversight, but I'd like to thank the staff, the lifeguards, the concession workers, the uh, administration, especially the uh, the, um, the manager, Evan Stoutenberg, who does a fantastic job. He's brought uh, lots of ideas that we've been able to put in place in the last couple of years and made the pool definitely a better place since he's been there. So um, I'm going to miss it, but I know it's in good hands with Mr. Potter. Um, cemetery, we're moving forward in the process to replace Mark Steinecker. Uh, we're going through the uh, uh, resumes and we're going to be working on that this month, uh, trying to get a replacement. The, the shed is uh, the white shed. So if you go down the hill across the gas station, there's a white shed. I think used to be actually be the the hall or the meeting room uh, that that's going to be taken down. Hopefully this month they're getting plans to take that out and make it a part. <laughs> area. It's, um, falling, it's it's not in good shape, so it's going to come down um, and and give us more parking, which we we need at times down there for for, for funerals. Reads across America. Um, placed 300 wreaths um, and I think 600 flags, little American flags on graves of veterans back in December. I was uh, privileged to be a part of that. I I was there representing German Township as well as the cemetery board. Uh, it was nice to see all the volunteers spreading the wreaths out across the cemetery. Uh, Mark had set boxes throughout so <laughs> so far they had reenactors revolutionary um revolutionary war reenactors that took place they did a 21 guns uh salute it was a good time it was very very cold but it, it went really well um and they did a nice job spreading those throughout the cemetery uh, the ota is coming up i'm planning on attending for for the three days just like to thank Jeremy and Scott for your hard work because that was miserable. <laughs> the <laughs> temperatures were awful, the drifts were terrible, and salt didn't work. So you guys were in a and the wind wouldn't quit. So uh, appreciate it, all you guys do because that was that was definitely miser miserable. Um, lastly, I attended the city council meeting. There wasn't a whole lot. There was no work session. Um, there wasn't actually a whole lot discussed at the meeting. Yeah, so I have to like a little bit. Okay, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, and that concludes my report. Good. Oh, I got a question. How many uh, resumes did you get for the position? Uh, eight or ten. Yeah. Okay, so I finally got Shauna set up as an associate member to the o at the Ohio Township Association on one six twenty three, and the only uh, 
basically had to go all the way to the top of the executive director of the OTA, Ivy Fought, had to get involved because Harrison Township wasn't doing their job. Unfortunately, you, you got registered as Shauna Cross, so I had <laughs> so it was smooth until that. So I had to call them up and say, no, it's not. <laughs> so anyway, so that basically saved us $50 as far as the registration for the OTA. So it's good, good to have one. Thank you for all your help on that. That was much, much harder than it should have been. I attended the fire EMS oversight meeting on January 3rd, 2023. There were, uh, were 132 calls for service in December 2022. There was an overall increase of 7% of call volume for 2022 over 2021 and an increase of 16% from 2018 to 2022. The fire department had, uh, has the new Rosenbauer fire engine. It still needs to be lettered and have the equipment moved from the old engine and then training can occur. And the chief gave us a tour of the new engine. It's quite impressive. It has a $1,000 gallon water tank. I think the old one had a 500 or 750 gallon tank, so that would be good. Uh, I'll contact Scott Belcastro from Treble Energy LLC to attend our February, our next regular meeting in February to discuss their company for possible electric aggregation in the township. Uh, but we, they always have a booth at the Ohio Township Association Conference, so Jake and I will hopefully talk to them and get some information for our meeting. Having said that, uh, I was contacted today by John Feeble. He's from the Aspen Energy Corporation regarding electric aggregation. He's the guy that talked to me previously. So I think I'll talk to him again in a couple months and maybe get him in. So we'll have three different companies we can kind of compare who the best deal is. I think that our goal is to, as far as the township have to do as little as possible, let them do their thing. And Do we have to settle on a company before we put it on the ballot? Or is that a separate issue? That, that's a good question. I'm assuming because I'm these companies are probably gonna help us advertise. I'm assuming you probably have to, uh, Pick a company before we put on makes that. sense. Makes sure. sense, yeah. So, because okay. it sounds like um, Treble pretty much does everything as far as it gets the advertisements out, which is for it. So, we'll see. Uh, so, I watched the one three twenty three Germantown City Council meeting. I wasn't there in person. So, Jake Stubb was recognized for his eighth grade football team as the twenty twenty two West Division SWBL champions. So yeah. he got his picture taken with, the, yeah. with the certificate. Um, and there, were, there was some confusion because Mr. Mr. Reed stated that the, the pool levy will cost $4,500. The city would not want to levy in the day. We figured that out. So, Mr. Wassig stated that the 1523 Jed meeting would be his last, which never occurs. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm still waiting on that. Uh, council spent approximately 20 minutes. You were, you were there for that. I was there. discussing whether to pass an ordinance ordinance that there should be not no deposit of grass, leaves, twigs, brush, or dirt on private property. 20, 20 to 25 minutes to discuss that, and they eventually just tabled because they couldn't really figure it out. So I thought that was a waste of time. <laughs> anyway, very uh, much. So. I don't know why they just can't use the word unsightly. Unsightly, yeah. So, um, so that basically is all I've got. Uh, is there any other old business? I have none. Any new business? I'd like to say one thing. First off, thank you, Mr. Kingston, for posting a jet out here. And happy to do it. I could indulge you to do that again in the future, right? That was a, that's not a difficult thing. I'm happy to do so. So I should we we really have no formal mechanism within the jet at this point for advertising. We have no website, email list, or anything. We sent it to our email list. We put it on our website. We actually now, as the chief, I think, mentioned earlier, we now have a special section yeah. for the JED on our website. Um, so it went out to a lot of emails, uh, Facebook, website. So we'll continue to follow that Appreciate once somebody it. sends me or the chief the actual mm -hmm. document that we should use. Anything else? Anybody? I have a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We are adjourned at eight fifty uh, seven fifty-five. More to, I'll keep you busy. <laughs> oh, David, thanks for coming.